On day one, harvesters cut out these river reeds. And in eight days, after drying, burning, and filtering, the reeds will produce one of the most expensive salts in the world. Just one tablespoon of river reed salt costs about $1 in Kenya. Compare that to the four cents it costs locals for the same amount of sea salt. So how do producers make salt from river reeds? And why is it so expensive? River reed salt, or chumvi ya kienyeji, is made from the reeds of the machua plant that grow along the Enzoia River. Once the salt is extracted, it's typically sold in small quantities to chefs and luxury hotel owners in Kenya and abroad. Buyers describe its saltiness as powerful and umami-like. I buy the river reed salt because of, uh, I will say, the magic in it. The texture is smooth. It is not rough or coarse. For those who have tasted umami from Japan, it tastes almost the same, but this one has more of a, a sharp taste. So when you're cooking with it, you won't use a lot of it. Today, only the Bukuzu community in the village of Webuye continues the traditional process of making this rare salt by hand. This is the Enzoya River, and this is Andrew Wanyonyi Sikanga. Andrew and his sons harvest the reeds that grow along the riverbanks. Before they go out to harvest, Andrew starts the morning with a prayer. They pray for protection from the dangers they might encounter at the river, like snakes and crocodiles. To avoid coming into contact with them, Andrew and his sons need to harvest early. Today, they're looking for ripe river reeds. If the reed isn't at least two meters tall and the flowers at the top aren't wilted and nearly dried, the concentration of salt will be too low. Andrew hacks away at the ripe reeds, being careful not to uproot the plant or cut too close to the roots. That way, the reeds can regrow more quickly, and the roots can continue to spread onto other rocks. Only reeds with a high salt content make the effort worth it, because from them, Andrew can make enough salt to sell. Though there was a mild injury, today's harvest was a good one. After a long day of navigating the waters of the Enzoya River, Andrew and his sons leave the riverbank with a lot of reeds. Those 20 tablespoons will sell for about $20. Now they can begin the long manual process of extracting salt. First, Andrew must dry the reeds. Drying reeds can take four days when the skies are sunny, but in cloudier weather, it'll take longer. To begin processing, he has to burn the reeds for one to three days. Once all the reeds turn to ash, Andrew places them in a large pot with drainage holes. Then he slowly adds water. The water filters through the ashes and holes, 
each drop collecting at the bottom. He pours those droplets through another filter and into an aluminum pan. Next, he places the pan over an open fire, where the solution is left to boil until the liquid evaporates. Finally, after a full day of work, Andrew is left with this wet, salty paste. The next day, he packs the paste into banana leaves and places them under hot ashes to dry. After three hours, the salt hardens. From reed to salt, the process takes at least eight days. Andrew will sell the salt in the banana leaves. This is the same long process his family has practiced for generations. It's believed the tradition began in the 17th century when the Bakuzu people migrated eastward from Congo. At the time, areas in western Kenya were cut off from salt roots. So they set out to find a way to extract salt from these aquatic plants. Centuries later, the salt that was made out of necessity became a pricey commodity. At the market, this pack containing just three tablespoons of river reed salt costs about $3, and this larger pack, $7. It's likely to sell because local demand is high, Buyers know the intense work put into making this salt, so for them, the price is worth it. Although there aren't studies to confirm it, market sellers say that part of what keeps the salt in high demand locally is the belief it has special medicinal properties. But the most notable feature is its taste. In fact, Andrews River Reed Salt won the title for most unique indigenous salt at an international gastronomy exhibition in Italy in 2014. Slow Food, one of the organizers of the exhibition, established a presidium in 2009 for Kenya's River Reed Salt to drive more demand for the product. But fulfilling that demand would require more supply, which is difficult when production is so limited. One of the biggest threats to River Reed Salt production is climate change. According to Slow Food, the growing population in Kenya has led to deforestation, Indigenous trees along the Anzoya River have long held soil particles together and provided shade, keeping temperatures stable. But the loss of these trees, along with higher temperatures, unstable river levels, and landslides, has contributed to the loss of river reeds. Andrew tried growing the reeds with other water sources, but couldn't get the same outcome. <laughs> In addition to conservation efforts like replanting indigenous trees, Slow Food is working on creating more marshy areas for the reeds to grow. Since the river reed salt really does well with the waters from the river, we were thinking that if we try a little bit to divert some of these water from, from the river and have a, a marshy area plus some of the rocks, we can actually try to see whether we can increase the number of reeds because I know that as the people continue knowing about this particular salt, there will be high demand. This project, along with increased commercial exposure of river reed salt, hopes to help producers like Andrew and his sons keep their work alive for generations to come. <laughs>